I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. Well, not so much the video, the actual process of what I'm actually doing. And that is sorting out the chassis. And what I mean by that is weather protecting it, getting rid of the dirt and the rust and protecting it with something that will prevent further rusting because most of it underneath on the chassis is pretty good, but there are spots where it does need attention. A few years ago, I was recommended Dinatrol Dinitrol, this stuff. Okay, so this stuff is the what goes on the outside under the chassis, and then this one here, ML, that goes into all the cavities. So you need two separate ones on here. I've also bought now this one, this tiny little can here is expensive. It's about forty-five pounds for that. And what this does, RC nine hundred, this. Uh, converts the rust into metal so I've got a couple of cans of that in fact I've got a couple of cans of everything there's a few things on here which really made me worried kind of delayed my process in actually doing the the chassis itself so let me just read a few things flammable liquid and vapor may cause drowsiness or dizziness may cause damage to the central nervous system through prolonged or repeated exposure Harmful to aquatic life uh, with long-lasting effects. Keep away from heat, hot surfaces, sparks, open flames, blah, blah, blah. So it's flammable. No smoking. Take precautionary measures against static discharge. Wear protective gloves, protective clothing, eye protection. If on skin or hair, take off immediately. I could go on, right? I, I wasn't very happy about using this stuff. I'd have had to... Head to foot in protective gear, PPE. I would have um, had to protect areas of overspray, so you didn't go over the uh, overspray onto the vehicle or outside on the on the floor, as well as the sides outside into the environment. And this, I'm getting all this from the instructions on their website, not just the can. It had to be sprayed in a, a particular environment, so it couldn't be. Uh, too cold uh, and too humid so it had to be at perfect temperature so basically indoors somewhere it had to, the chassis had to be spotlessly clean steam cleaned in fact it said and i had at the time when i bought this um i was able to get to a compressor so i've got the air compressor version the you can get it in aerosols but it's this size and of course you don't get so much and it's more expensive so I, I ain't got an air compressor, so I can't use them. So more worries and problems uns unsolved in my head. One day, I think we were on holiday somewhere in Herman, and I thought to myself, I'm just going to... It started getting to me. I started thinking about it, and I thought, I'm just going to do a web search. I did a web search, and Lanagard was the first thing that came up. And I thought, what's this? Started reading up about it, thinking it's another one of these products. And you know what? It solved every single one of my problems, my issues with dinner troll. Every single one. I contacted Lenagard and they uh, agreed to send me their large underbody rust protection kit with the injector pack. It's 138 quid, so it's not, um, this is the biggest one to do. So it's, you know, it's a fairly decent price. So I get two of these two times two liter moto spray and this is the main product this is what you spray everywhere also get a tub of lanagard easy underbody rust protection this is like a grease it is not actually a, a grease but it works like a grease and you can paint that onto the nuts and bolts and any really exposed areas and then you spray it uh, they also sent me the uh, spray gun. So that goes into the bottle when you just spray. So no air compressor. Uh, they also provided me with a spray bottle. So if there's any parts that I can't get to, or maybe I can just have some in there and uh, just give it a bit of a spray whenever I need to on anything I want, rather than actually cracking open the bottles again. And they've also sent me, this is the, uh, the injector. So you screw that onto the, onto there. 
and now you have a 360 degree injector so I can get into the nooks and crannies uh, like this in, inside the actual chassis rails. So I just want to read out some of the features of Lanagard which really did you know, spark my interest in this product. It's natural, so it's actually made out of, as the name kind of suggests, it's made out of lanolin which is made out of uh, sheep's wool, lymph fleeces, so it's natural. Uh, it hermetically seals the surface, so there's no oxidation or rust that can occur once it's on the metal. Salt, acid and alkaline and petroleum resistant. It's waterproof of course, otherwise why would you have it? Uh, in fact, when you spray it with a jet wash and it's jet wash protect, uh, resistant, it just runs off, the water just runs off. It's non-conductive, it's non-evaporative, it's heat resistant. It's non-perishable, so it's safe to use on rubbers, rubbers and plastics. The only thing I was told not to do is spray it on the underneath of where the wood is, on the uh, which makes up the motorhome, because because it's um, humetic, humetically, hu hu hermetically sealed, seals the surface. Any moisture that's in the wood could actually start it to um, to uh, rot. So uh, yeah, we don't want to spray so much. We can get spray on there, but you know, not, not to cover it entirely. Don't need to wear head to foot in uh, PPE, although I'll be wearing glasses. I'll be wearing some um, goggles to protect my eyes. And uh, that's it, basically. Oh, and the only other thing is that it smells of sheep. <coughs> so the first thing I need to do, and I think this is going to be the hardest thing, is clean all the chassis. And I'm going to use a combination of jet wash, I'm going to use uh, the hose and a brush to get rid of their 25 years of grime, mud, salt and whatever. But typically in the instructions it says really all you need to do is jet wash it. And I know there could be things that could break under there due to jet washing. So I'm have to, going to have to be very careful. I had a late start the first day but my first step was going to be cleaning and removing all that mud and grit from underneath. My approach was to clean the entire chassis, prepare it and then slap on the lana guard to protect it. However, we had some bad weather approaching and I wasn't too sure when I'll be able to finish and I didn't want to be driving backwards and forwards in the rain undoing all that work that I would have done on the chassis. And it's very satisfying seeing the mud just running away from the chassis of your 25 year old motorhome. Starting early the following day, I wasn't really happy. I had jet washed half the chassis by this time and I felt like that I had to actually take the wheels off to do a proper job. That will give me more room to get right underneath and see the, all the nooks and crannies and all the hidden spots. So removing one wheel at a time, starting off with the offside rear, that's the right side of the motorhome. The instructions say that a jet wash should be enough, but I felt like I really wanted the best opportunity for the Lana Guard to do its job because I wanted to get another 25 years out of the chassis. So I used the jet wash and I used a large and small brush and for the places that I wanted to be a bit more gentle, I used a normal hose. After cleaning, the next step is preparation. The instructions say to remove all loose surface rust. So I used a small and large wire brush and a wire wheel on a drill which made good work of the job. I also removed paint and sealant where the water got underneath and was starting to rust. On the top parts I used a flat bladed screwdriver and I probably didn't need to go as far as I did but I really just wanted to do the best job I could do so make sure that that lana guard stuck to the chassis. There's loads of surface rust on the tow bar subframe but it was all minor and the subframe was very solid. The rust however was coming off in clouds of dust. I was more careful with the rear axle because this is where the brake lines were which by looking at them I may need to replace them but that's a job for the future. I was also careful with the wheel hubs, I used a small brush and the hose rather than a jet wash to clean them. The next step is rust protection and the worst areas, the most rusty areas 
I used the rust converter from Dinatrol. Now I wore my goggles and my breather mask for this process because this stuff smelt very toxic and I didn't film any of the process of spraying because I felt that it would melt my camera. I left the rust converter drying for a few hours before applying the Lanagard grease. This is a highly concentrated version of the spray. It's not runny, it's very solid, very similar to thick wax. Now you have to heat it by putting it in a bucket of hot water and then you just paint it on to all the rusty spots, all the bare metal spots that you think need protection. Some of the areas got more attention than others. The last step is the fun part, I think. The trigger spray pipe goes straight into the bottle. I did have a moment of panic where I thought Lanagard has sent me a duff trigger because it didn't work at first, uh, but I think it was just trapped air inside and eventually I got it working by adjusting the nozzle and squeezing the trigger several times, in fact, many times. The instructions say a little goes a long way and there is no need to apply it on really thickly, otherwise it just drips off. I sprayed everywhere, everywhere that was metal, including the greased up areas, which were still wet at this point. Not just the wheel arches, the cross members, the rear axles, and because it's safe to spray on rubbers and plastics, I also did the airbag suspension. Now there wasn't much room underneath the motorhome. I could almost sit up in some places, but mostly I was on my back, and the, the very rear is a very tight squeeze and at the end of each day I had a neck ache because I was trying to keep my head off the floor all the time. And just look at the state of the garage, it looks a right mess. On the following day I worked on the near side rear which is the left side, the passenger side of the motorhome and it's basically the same procedure as yesterday, cleaning, preparation, removing loose paint and rust and using the rust converter. The outriggers were the worst this side. Three needed extra attention with the rust converter and the grease, but none of them were holed. Cleaning and using the jet wash and watching all the dirt run away may be very satisfying, like I said earlier. However, using the spray gives you a huge sense of achievement because it's the last step and there's nothing to do afterwards other than wait and let it dry. I didn't worry too much about overspray, the dark area above me is the wooden floor. I've got some spray around the edges, but the wood should still be breathable. Lanagard told me that after spraying the brake lines, I should wipe off the excess, but I'm not 100% sure why, they didn't say. A minor annoyance, and it is very a minor, is that when you don't have much left in the bottle, it has a tendency to fall over as you're spraying. Like I said, it's very minor. I just had to come up with something that's negative about the product. And since Lanagard is heat resistant to 450 degrees Celsius, I sprayed the exhaust. Now, once I've done all the spraying at the back, I attached the injector, which is a piece of tubing with a 360 degree nozzle on the end. Now, this is used for the internals, such as box sections, the seals, and any unseeable places. The technique that I used was to, as I pulled the trigger, I moved the pipe out a little bit and repeated that process until the pipe came out. It is the end of day three, well, two and a half really, and I have done the majority of it. From the back to the front, I've just got this section left to do. Both sides, of course. On the fourth day, I worked on the front near side wheel, which is the left side, the passenger side. I started off with the jet washing and the cleaning, and then this happened. So we're working on the front here, and everything's going fine. It's all nice and clean in there now. As clean as I could get it. Now, I do, I have come across a problem. In fact, I made it worse by digging a little bit deeper. But you can see there, that is a hole. Now, I don't think it's anything structural because this is the footwell to the passenger side. And this is what I mean. This is the, the footwell, uh, and I think the hole is just about there. And I have no idea how to take this up. I've loosened these screws, and that is solid in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a spot welding. 
It's only about the size of someone's thumb, so it's not that big. I cut out a suitable sized piece of steel and then welded it in place. There's my welding, my patch. I'm not entirely impressed with my welding, um, but that is because I've had to do a bit of spot welding because I didn't want the heat to get too much because I didn't want it to catch fire. Right, getting back to it, I slapped on the grease on the rusty spots, including my welding. Then I covered the disc brake with a cloth so I didn't get any overspray onto them and applied the spray, getting right up into those coil springs. I didn't just do the wheel arch, I also did the front cross member. This is where the radiators sit on right at the front and it's a common problem for Ducatos for them to rust. Rain just runs off the radiators and sits on the cross member rusting. So if you have a Ducato you should go and check yours and make sure that your front cross member isn't falling apart. I also sprayed the passenger step well. This is very shiny and this is because it is still slightly wet and when it's wet it feels like a light oil and it's mostly transparent. The front subframe was next and this is where everything is attached to. The wheels, suspension, everything like that. And this is where the back of the engine is as well so I sprayed there too. It's now day five and uh, I've got the last section to do which is just behind this wheel here. Now I've, I've had a bit of a, a quick look about seeing what's under there. It looks a bit rusty, so uh, fingers crossed I don't have to get my welder out again. Mm, that would be bad. But anyway, let's get that wheel off and take a look. I think you know the steps by now. I was very careful with the jet wash is spraying the suspension tunnel because there was a risk of water getting into the driving area and that is where all the electrics are. Now, I probably didn't need to worry, but it's just something I considered. Look what I found, a cricket's trying to escape. I've disturbed him with the jet wash. Right, we are all done and dusted here. I think I've done a really good job, nice and clean. Not just here, but also under the gas locker. After you've done all the spraying, Lanagard suggests that you do not drive your vehicle for 24 hours. And this is so that you can let the first part of the curing process complete. Now, after three days, it's still slightly soft, but after seven to 10 days, it's fully cured and it feels like candle wax. So it's been two weeks since I applied all the spray and done all that work. So let's go and check out what Herman is like underneath. Well, as you can see, I'm right underneath Herman again. And, uh, well, I must say he's looking cleaner, of course. But uh, let's take a look at some of the highlights. I can tell there's a, a light sheen to it. And I don't know if you can see that, when I touch it lightly, there's a very little bit of oil kind of comes off. It's, it is dry, but it's as if it just feels like I'm sweating. A bit weird of an explanation. Uh, I did notice, and you can see where I tried it there, this isn't metal, this is plastic, but you could tell that that's now satin. If I just mark my finger across it, it's still on there. It's just um, slightly, uh, yeah, just come off of my finger a little bit. Now where I place the grease, oh that is, yeah, look at the grease, it's actually just come off of my finger. I'm only lightly touching it, so it is still, I wouldn't want to say wet, but yeah, it's kind of active I suppose. So everything seems to have some sort of satin finish. The rusty spots or the, the bare metal parts, they've gone from a light brown rust to a almost black. Yes, it's very, it's transparent, but with a, a light brown colour to it, like a light brown tinge, if you like. The exhaust, yeah, I can still feel it on there. It doesn't seem to be like the rest of it, where it's kind of coming off my finger. So maybe it's dry due to the heat. I don't know. I don't know. The rubber looks dry, and it certainly is. The rear axle now looks uh, dry and dark. It has a slight stickiness to it as well. I think it's actually still curing. 
it naturally dries in fresh air um, but we've had a lot of bad weather recently so over the last couple of weeks so maybe that has had an effect on this drying process but it should feel like a wax candle but my question is have you actually used any sort of car body under sealant for your vehicle what was its name and what did you think of it was it any good now if you're thinking of using Lanagard, let us know in the comments section as well uh, because I've got a £5 off discount code that I'll leave in the video description and uh, that will get you yeah, 5 quid off your first order as long as it's over £50. Now, don't forget to watch this video here. You might be interested in that where I take a look at the fog lights and put, put, fit in new fog lights to the motorhome. And if you think that this video has earned it, then here's the subscribe button. And until next time, thanks very much for watching. And goodbye.